Welcome to this tutorial I'm going to be doing with you today on the shoulder joint, otherwise known as our glenohumeral joint. We have already focused on the complexity of the knee joint in a previous video, but with the shoulder we sacrifice a lot of that complexity to give ourselves the most freely movable joint in our body. So it has reduced complexity, but the highest range of motion. The first thing that we're going to notice with our shoulder joint is that it has no real socket. The bone surface of the head of the humerus meets with the glenoid fossa of the scapula and sits between or below the acromion. And let's just draw this up quickly here. So it interacts with the scapula at the glenoid cavity or glenoid fossa and below the acromion here. Now let's have a quick think about this joint. Uh, we know it's a synovial joint, meaning that it's going to be diarthrotic or freely movable. All of our diarthrotic joints are freely movable. And that it is also a multi-axial ball and socket joint. So if it's a ball and socket joint and it's multi-axial, what kind of movements is it going to allow? Well, the first type of movement that we can accomplish with our shoulder joint is rotation. So we can rotate the shoulder as I'm drawing here. But what else? We've got flexion. In flexion, we can uh, bend the arm or lift the arm upwards. And if we can flex it, surely we can extend it as well. So extension, and that's just moving in the opposite direction. And I'll just point out here quickly as well that a better definition of flexion and extension would be uh, flexing is decreasing the angle of the joint, usually along the sagittal plane, and extension is just increasing the angle of the joint. Now our next type of movement allowed is abduction and adduction. Now with Adduction, we can think of it as adding on to the body or bringing closer to the body, meaning that we are moving the shoulder uh, or moving the arm towards our midline. And with abduction, we are abducting it away from the body or taking it away. So lifting our arms upward out to the side. And the last type of movement we can achieve with our shoulder is circumduction or circling uh, your arm in a giant circle like a propeller. So we're going to see that when it comes to range of motion, your shoulder joint is an absolute powerhouse. Now if we have a look at the glenoid fossa over here, just highlighting in now, we will see that it only contributes a small amount of support to the overall size of the head of the humerus. Now this is going to result in it being a somewhat poor in terms of joint stability, but it's going to be one of the features that allows that increased range of motion. So low support, poor stability, but increased range of motion. So let's talk now about how we actually support this joint. Now our shoulder is unique in the fact that ligaments play the main supportive role. And these ligaments are located mainly anteriorly or on the anterior aspect of the joint and can be seen outlined here. First we have our coracohumeral ligament between the coracoid process of the scapula and the head of the humerus. Now this ligament helps to support the weight of the upper limb and is quite thick and strong as well. So it supports weight and it's also thick. Apart from that, there are also three glenohumeral ligaments that help support the anterior section of the joint capsule between the uh, glenoid fossa and the head of the humerus as well. But these ligaments are somewhat weak and may even be absent in some individuals, hinting at uh, some form of evolutionary selectivity with these ligaments. So glenohumeral, they're weaker and they might even be absent. So these ligaments here account for quite a bit of support, but by far our strongest stabilizers of the shoulder 
and for this particular joint come in the form of tendons that are supporting our muscles in the area of the shoulder. Now the chief stabilizer being the tendon of the long head of the biceps brachii. So we'll just write that here. So tendon of the long head of the biceps brachii. Now this tendon helps to firmly secure the head of the humerus against the glenoid cavity. Now we'll just show that here. So this is the uh, tendon here and it's going to be running through a tendon sheath. And I'll just show it over here on the other drawing as well. So it's going to be running through this tendon sheath and attaching here at the back of the glenoid cavity. Now the spot in which this tendon actually attaches is called the glenoid labrum. Now the glenoid labrum is a, a thick lip of fibrocartilage on the outer surface of the glenoid cavity. And the last thing I'll just quickly draw in is that that tendon is going to be uh, pulling and firmly securing the head of the humerus against the glenoid cavity. Within our shoulder joint, we have a group of four other tendons that support the joint and are commonly jointly referred to as the rotator cuff, which I'm sure you've all heard of before. Now these tendons are the subscapularis, supraspinatus, infraspinatus, and teres minor. You may have heard of people injuring their rotator cuff before, and that always refers to one of these uh, four tendons that are associated with muscles that are helping uh, stabilize that shoulder joint. And we'll cover them in a later video when we focus on common injuries of the shoulder. And we'll almost exclusively look at the rotator cuff in that video. So it's important for you to remember the uh, rotator cuff and remember the tendons involved. And I'm even going to write that down here for you. So remember, remember these tendons. Now in the next video, I'm going to talk to you about the difference between a bursa that I'm outlining here and a tendon sheath that I'm outlining here. Now as we can see, they're both involved in the shoulder joint, but how do they differ? And we're going to have a look at that next. Okay, that covers all of the basics we need to know about our shoulder joint. I hope this has been helpful for you guys and helped you to understand how the shoulder joint works a little bit better. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.